Today we're gonna cover everything you need to know about the pen tool in Photoshop, especially if you're a beginner, this is the video for you. Right from what is the pen tool to making the most complex selections and many other applications. In this video, we'll make sure that you get up and running with the tool. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin with anything, I want you to remember the letter P. I'm gonna flash it on the screen right now, time and again, so that you don't forget this is the most important letter if you want to learn the pen tool. I don't want you to click with the mouse or the tablet on the pen tool ever. Please use this shortcut, letter P. Enough of flashing, let's get started. So what is the pen tool? Well, the pen tool allows you to draw two points, point A and point B. Let me turn this on, point A and point B and allows you to draw a line between those points. And that's pretty much it. And this line can be straight. This line can also be a curve. That's all there is. Now this is the fundamental of pen too. Now you can extend it to create complex shapes, paths, so on and so forth. What is paths and shapes? We'll get to that later, but we need to remember one thing. Anything you do with a pen tool is a vector. Okay, it's not a raster, it's a vector. Well, what's the difference between vector and raster? Here's the difference. A vector is based on mathematical formulas. A raster is based on pixels, right? The picture that you take with a camera is a raster because it's made up of tiny pixels. When you bought the camera, they might have said you the camera is 24 megapixels or 50 megapixels, which means the picture that you take with it consists of 50 million pixels. What are pixels? Small squares with color information. They combined together to give you the image. Vector on the other hand is any graphic which is based on mathematical formulas and not on pixels. For example, a simple mathematical formula like y equals x determines a straight diagonal line, 45 degrees, right? No matter how much you zoom it, here's the special thing about vectors, no matter how much you zoom in, it will never pixelate. Why? Because it's not made up of pixels. Let me illustrate. In Photoshop, if you draw any shape, let's choose a custom shape and choose any shape that you like. And let's choose a color, maybe red. That's fine. And we're going to choose shape. Now, if you draw it, this is fine. This is a fine red colored spade or whatever that is. Now, since this is vector, you can make it as big as you want. Let's make it this big and it's still razor sharp. Have a look. It's still very sharp. If you make it smaller, just like this, control or command T and let's make it smaller and hit enter. Okay. Now again, let's make it bigger. It's still sharp. You can do this again and again, and it always stays razor sharp, but this doesn't happen with raster images because they are made up of pixels. And once you make them smaller, they burn themselves down into those pixels. And once you make it bigger, it kind of messes up. Remember this canvas, it's made up of pixels. So if you zoom in, okay, if you zoom in, it's going to pixelate because this canvas is made up of pixels, right? Remember, but this object, the shape is a vector. Now let's do the same thing. Let's delete it. Okay. Let's select it. Let's delete it. Now create a new layer, select the same shape. And this time select pixels. Now it will be created off pixels. Let's make it. Now, if you make it bigger, it might not pixelate in the first glance, right? I made it bigger. Let it. Okay. It's still sharp. Not bad. Once you make it smaller, just like this, hit enter. And then again, when you make it bigger, have a look at this. It has lost all the details. It's totally crazy right now. Have a look. It's crazy. All you need to know is that anything you do with a pen tool is a vector. Simple, right? Now, how to use the pen tool? Pretty simple. Use the letter P. Don't forget it. P is the shortcut for the pen tool. Press the letter P. Second thing, select what you want to do. You want to make a path or you want to make a shape. What are those? We'll get to that later. First, let's understand path. Now, what is a path? A path is a line, a vector line with no thickness. Okay. If you make a path like this, and if you save the image, it won't show up. You can add thickness to it. You can make, convert it into a shape, a selection, or do a lot of things with it. Add stroke, but a simple path, just path is a vector line with no thickness. All right. So 
How to make a straight path? It's very simple. Dot, click once, click twice, click thrice, four, five, six, seven. And once you reach the starting point, it shows you a circle, which means the circuit is complete, right? Just click here and the shape will be complete. Now you can do anything with it. You can make it a selection, make selection or do anything with it. So we'll get to that later, okay? Now let's talk about path. What if you wanna make a curved path? Okay, let's go back. And one of the greatest things about using the pen tool while you're making a selection is that you can go back by point by point. That's amazing, right? Okay, to make a curve, it's simple. Let's open up the point A and point B so that it becomes easy for you. On point A, I have a point. On point B, instead of just clicking there, we will click and drag. It becomes a curve. Now, once you click and drag, look at this. What is this? This is a handle. Now, a handle influences the curve. Let me do that again for you. If you click and drag, this is the handle. Now, if you move the handle this way, if you rotate the handle, this will determine the degree of the curve. Now, what is degree? Degree is simply the angle, 60 degree, 90 degree, zero degree, right? Okay, now, if you make the handle longer, this will control the intensity of that degree. Suppose this is the degree that you want. If you make the handle longer, it will increase the intensity of it, right? Degree, this is, we are changing the degree. We are changing the intensity of that particular degree. Got it? Okay. Now, if you look at the handle, it has two parts, this part and this part. This part influences this curve. Now, what does this part do? This part will influence the upcoming curve. Now, what do we mean by upcoming curve? So if you make a point here, see how this curve is influencing that, right? Now, you can anytime edit it by holding control or command if you're using a Mac. Hold the controller command and you can edit it like hell. Right, you can edit this handle, you can edit this point, you can do anything you like, have a look. You can make it shorter, longer, isn't that wonderful? Let's go back, let's understand one more thing. Now, instead of starting out with a point, we could have started out with a handle straight away, okay? So let's go back, and instead of starting out with a point, if you, at the moment, in the beginning, just click and drag, this creates a handle, creates a handle. Now, the next time you make a point, the curve will be influenced by that click and drag. Now what's happening? A curve is now influenced by two handles, right? You can edit it anytime you like by holding the key control or command. Hold the key control or command. It takes you to the direct selection tool and you can edit it real time. And once you're satisfied, you can continue, okay? Or you could have continued by clicking and dragging, right? And you can finish it right there. Done. So that's how you do it using two handles. Now, why should we use two handles? There are a lot of advantages on using two handles. Suppose you wanna trace this circle, what would you do? Create a point here, very simple, okay? Create another point here, click and drag. This is fine, this looks great. And create another point here. Create another point here, click and drag. And finish it, just like this. Done. Now. This might not look weird to you, but let me just turn off the circle. Let, let's have a look. Well, <laughs> this looks disgusting. And if you don't have double handles, have a look here. It looks very sharp. Anywhere where you don't have a straight handle, any point, it will look sharp. So if you wanna make smooth curves, you gotta use two handles. But if you want to corner, you know what to do, right? We'll get to that. Okay, now instead of doing that, if we would have started with a handle, just like this, and then, and by the way, you can hold the shift key to make sure that it's straight. So when you hold the shift key, it's all straight. Okay, let's click and drag here. That's fine. Click and drag here. That's great. Click and drag. And complete it. Now have a look. We can always go ahead and edit it make it a little larger. I guess we could have make it, made it a little larger. Hold the control key. There we go. Now if you turn it off, it's much more smoother. Have a look. It's so much more smoother. It doesn't have a hard edge. So always have two handles influencing one line to have a smoother curve. Okay? You don't want it to be sharp 
in the points. Now that circle was easy because it didn't have any sharp edge. How to make complex shapes like this? Okay, just click a point here. Very simple. Let's start. Click a point. Well, let's click another point there and make it just like this. It's looking great. Now, if you click a point here, this line is going to be influenced by this handle. Now there's two things which you can do, right? You can move the handle or you can delete the handle. Okay. So to move the handle, here's what you need to do. Hold the alt key. Okay. Hold the alt key, click on the handle and move it just like that. Now it's fitting. Now we should have made this point. What a point with handles, but we didn't do it. Don't you need to worry? You don't have to go back. Just let's finish it. Okay. It's straight. All you need to remember, alt key bends the handles. Alt key removes the handles. Alt key also brings the handle back if you want. So hold the alt key. This opens up the convert point tool when you take it over a point and then just click and drag like that. It's too much. Just release the alt key. Hold the alt key again to just control one of the curves, right? Done. And you could have also done one more thing. Hold the alt key, make a short one and release the alt key. Now hold the control key and then control it just the way you like. Okay. Make it a little, select this one. Okay. Click on that point and then take it back and you can adjust the way you like, right? Now you can influence that. Now remember that this point doesn't have any handles, just this point and this point. You could have made handles on both the points. Now, here's another way to do it. Let's go back and let's delete this path. And by the way, paths are here under the paths tab. We'll get to that later. Okay. Take the pen. Instead of that, we could have just opened up with like this. Okay. And created something like this. Right. Now you can hold the control key and using the direct selection tool, you can adjust it the way you like it. And then you can just make a point here and finish it. Just finish it. If you hold the control key and if you try to edit it, this line, this handle will not break. If you want a sharp edge, the handle needs to break. If the handle is straight, it will be curvy. It won't be sharp. So hold the alt key, break the angle. And once you break the angle, you can hold the control key again using the direct selection tool or the command key if you're using a Mac and then you can adjust it the way you like. Okay. Even here, the handle is not broken. You need to break the handle. How to break the hand handle? Hold the alt key and then take the handle and you can do whatever you want with it. Right? And it's pretty much done. Have a look. This is a fine piece of path. Now let's take the game to the very next level. Let's trace this heart. Now, usually when we are making a heart, what we do is that we make one side of it and we flip that side to make it totally symmetrical. But in this case, just for educational purposes and just to learn, we're going to select the whole. We're going to trace the whole heart. Okay, so I'm going to show you two or three ways to do this. Click once here. You're starting out here. Click and drag. Now, this handle has influenced this curve. This handle will influence what? The upcoming curve. Okay, click and drag, right? It has influenced some, right? Just click and drag like that. Click. Okay. Watch, I didn't click and drag because I didn't want it to be smooth. Okay. Click and drag. You can always edit that later. Click and drag. It's fine. Click and drag and just let's finish it. That's fine. Now, let me show you one more thing. This is fine. This was very easy. Now, here's one more thing I need you to understand. Why am I making this point? You could also have created a handle for it and then broken the handle just like this. Just create a handle and you could have broken that using which key? The Alt key. Alt key transforms the pen tool to the convert point tool. Well, what does the convert point tool do? It converts. What does it convert? It converts corners to curves and curves to corners. Okay. Now this is a curve. We need to convert that into a corner. Now, in case you made a point here, now you need to convert this. Hold the Alt key. Break it like that. It's looking great like that, but you don't want this, right? Let's delete it. Okay. With the pen tool selected, make sure auto add and delete is selected. Just hover over it. The pen tool will show a minus. Just click it. 
it will let go of it. The lesser the point, the better. Always remember, if you want to take one thing away from this video, just take this. The lesser the points, the better, okay? The more efficient you are. Now you can edit it just like this with broken handles. It's so much more better. Now let me show you another way. So instead of making a point here, you could have used broken handle here too. Let's start again. So click and drag like that and break the handle. Hold the Alt key and break it just like this. Now this handle will influence this side and make a curve here. This handle will influence this side and make a curve here. Watch. Right? It has already influenced. It's too much influenced, I know. You just click and drag it a little bit and you can just make it shorter by holding the control key. Right? Control key opens up the direct selection too. Now, you can make it the way you want. And once you finish it, I'm going to do it quickly for you. See? This is influenced by what? This one. This handle. Can I show you my personal favorite trick when it comes to pen tool? I think this will be useful for you. Here's what you do. Just Click once and make points where you think there will be curve. Just do that very quickly. And maybe you'll do it once here, 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 here. Done. Now you can hold the Alt key. Now remember, what does the Alt key do? It transforms the pen tool into the convert point tool when you hover over an anchor point. So this is these are the points or in other words, anchor points. When you hold the Alt key and hover over these points, this converts the pen tool into the convert point tool. Now, what does the convert point tool do? It converts. It converts what? It converts corners to curves and curves to corners. In technical words, it does three things. Number one, it introduces handles, it deletes handles, and it breaks handles, right? That's all that it does. Hold the Alt key, click and drag. Fine, done. Hold the Alt key. Click and drag, done. And maybe you want to break the handle here. If you want a little sharpness, then release the Alt key and hold the Alt key again. This will break the handle, but we don't want to break the handle here. This is fine the way it is. Now hold the Alt key, click and drag, just like not in the opposite direction here. Now we want to break the handle. How to break the handle? Release the Alt key, hold it again, and then simple, right? and you want to drag it, hold the control key and that's fine. Now, once it's broken, you can use the control key. I know that's, that's a lot to take in, but at the end, I'll tell you ways to practice it. Okay. Hold the alt key and introduce a handle. There you go. Okay. Introduce a handle. This is so much faster for me. And then you can hold the control key and adjust that so much faster. Now let me introduce you to the pen tool family. If you're using the pen tool, these are the tools which you will be using along with it. So there is this freeform pen tool. What does this mean is that if you draw anything that will convert it to a path, you will never use it. Honestly, you will never use it. This is add anchor point tool. Okay. This is important. Choose add anchor point tool. If you want to add a point here and there, you want to do something with it, just add a point. You can do anything with it. Just change or do whatever you want. It adds points as simple as that. Now there's another one. Delete anchor point two. Just delete it. Done. It deletes points and another one convert point two. We have already used this by using a shortcut convert point two. What it does, it converts what converts what a curve to a corner and a corner to a curve. In technical words, it introduces handles. It removes handles and it breaks handles. That's what it does. So let me add a point here. Let me show what it does. Okay. So if we add a point here, if we remove this point, so convert point two, we click on that, that will remove the handles from the point, right? Now, if you want to introduce the handles back again, the same convert point two, click and drag, done. If you want to break the handle, the same convert point tool is selected, just break the handle. As simple as that. Right. And another one which you will be using, which we were already using is the direct selection tool, right? Direct selection tool is used for editing these. Now, do you have to choose all of them while using the pen tool? No, all you have to do use the shortcuts. So just select the pen tool P again, do not click on it P to use the pen tool. And then what are the shortcuts control or command for the direct selection tool? See, you can edit it. Alt or option 
for the convert point to okay simple same and that's all you need to remember and also hold the shift key if you want anything straight straight 90 degrees 45 degrees shift is your man or woman okay just to add you don't have to use these add anchor point and delete anchor point tools all you have to do just make sure auto add delete is checked and when you hover over the path with this make sure the path is selected by holding the control or command if you're using mac and clicking on it and then when you have the pen tool selected and when you have this checked and if you want to add a point just when you hover over the path have a look wherever there is no point and it's just the plain path it just transforms it to add anchor point tool right so you can add anchor point if you like and you can hold the control or command to just control it if you want to delete it look here it's auto add delete you can use the same tool right so you can hover over the point and just click once it takes it away okay you can also take this away if you want so that's how it works just make sure this is checked and you don't have to access these tools just use the pen tool and all the shortcuts now you must be thinking whatever we do with the pen tool doesn't show up in less why would it show up after all it's a path right so if we do anything with the pen tool just like this select the pen tool p okay if it's select the freeform tool you know what to do shift p to just shift between the pen tool and the freeform tool you will always use just the pen tool make sure it's set to the pen tool now click on click once and if you make any path it doesn't show up here instead it shows up in path right have a look work path you can make a new path see want to go back to the old one well it's not lost sometimes you think where did that path go it just doesn't delete it's still there in the paths tab okay check the paths this is for the paths tab now here's what's interesting let's delete both of these delete both of these now if you create a closed path and you fill it okay let's make a closed path just like this and okay very funky path here you want to break this alt key or the option key break it and just like spivey eyes you want to fill it very simple let's fill it go to the layers panel and click on this gray white icon and choose solid color choose whatever color you want maybe yellow or green okay let's choose green click ok now it's filled now this is a shape this is a shape now what is the difference between shape and a path simple a shape is a path with a fill since fill cannot be there in the paths tab the fill is in the layers tab and the corresponding path is in the paths tab have a look color fill shape path okay even if you delete the work path doesn't matter the shape is still there whatever shape we created earlier so i created this moon shape if you select this if you go to the paths tab it has moon shape path the corresponding path for this shape right you can change it anytime you like come back to the layers we created this shape color fill you can change the color just double click on it you can change the color to anything you like okay fill is in the layers panel the path the corresponding path is in the paths tab okay you can change it anytime you like you know what to do press control and then you can make changes to this right very very simple you can just add or subtract do whatever you want with it so just remember this is simple what is a shape a shape is a path with fill where fill is in the layers tab and path is in the paths tab you can do it in another way too you can just delete it and once you select the pen tool you can choose shape see the pen tool deals just with paths and shape these are vectors it doesn't deal with pixels and that's why it's grayed out shape let's choose shape and if you draw the same it will already come with the fill okay just let's it's already complete shape it's a weird shape but you get the idea let's try it again select the pen tool p don't forget that okay and let's finish it oh we didn't just draw it yeah there we go that looks better and now see the fill is in the layers panel the path is right here you can just double click on it and change the color to whatever you like 
Now, what is the application of the pen tool? Believe me, there are so many applications which are beyond the scope of this video, right? From making selections, paths, shapes, strokes. Adobe Illustrator has the pen tool. Any drawing software has a pen tool, right? Any good drawing softwares. Okay. Now, if you quickly want to know what are the applications, simple. Just create a path. Let's create a new layer first and create any path like that. Right click on it. See what you can do. Make a selection, new guides from shape, fill path, stroke path bunch of things you can do with it okay there are a lot more things you can create vector masks okay now let's talk about creating selections if you want to make precise selections okay if you have hard edges not hairs if there's a hair in your photo of course i would recommend you to use select and mask but if you have hard edges you can use the pen tool okay for very precise selections so like this and just like this just trace along the lines it's very simple and you can use that trick. Just point, 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 point. Okay. And then you can make it smooth later. Just point, 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 finish it. You can make it smooth later. You can just hold the alt key or the option key, click and drag opposite direction. This is the right direction. Okay. Click and drag. Alt key, click and drag. And by the way, once I'm zoomed in, I'm holding the space bar key to move the canvas. Okay. Alt key, click and drag. Now here we need to break it. How to break it? Release it and then again, grab this handle. The Alt key is held, the Option key in Mac, and then make it just like this. This handle is influencing this curve. This handle is influencing this curve. As simple as that. Just introduce it make it a little smaller and you get the idea how to do it. I'm not going to do, do it completely. And once you want to convert this into a selection, just right click on it and make selection feather zero click. Okay. Feather is the softness of the selection. And now you can choose this one, this layer, and then you can create a mask of it just like this. So simple, isn't it? Now, one of the most common questions that we get a lot that suppose you're using the pen tool and using the direct selection tool, you click somewhere else, how to continue this, right? If you use the pen tool again, it creates a new path, right? How to continue this? Okay. Suppose you held the controller command to click somewhere else. How would you continue this? It's very simple. Press P again. If it selects any other tool, if it's already selecting pen tool, that's fine. Now, once you hover over it, the last line, it will show you a symbol, right? Connect symbol. Just click on that. And from there you can continue from the same path or whatever path you want to continue with. If there are a lot of paths, just click on the end and go to the paths panel or select that path and you can continue very easily. I know this was a lot of information for you to take in, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to one thing, but I think three things, practice, practice, and practice. And one of the very fun ways to practice is by playing a game. Which game? The Bezier game. If you want to up your game in the pen tool, play this game. So there's this game crafted by Mark McKay. He's a genius guy. Really, really great help. Just go to bezier.method.ac. Links in the description. Just get started and it will hone your skills. It's a level by level game. So it's showing you what to do. Just click here, click here. This was simple. Done. Okay. This will go from shape to shape. It will show you what keys to press and it will show you shift. If you hold the shift, straight line will happen and 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, zero degree, 180 degree straight lines. Okay. It will show you what to do and you can up your game by using this. This was simple. Just click and drag like that. Hold the shift key to make it straight. Simple, 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 just simple done. Now this is where I learned to make the heart where I taught you. So click and drag and you know what to do. Hold the alt key to break it down and then make it like that. Hold the alt key now to break it down and finish it. No, it's showing me an error. Okay. You figure this out. Okay. <laughs> Play this game. You will learn a lot. Okay. Just a quick recap. What is a pen tool? Well, a pen tool allows you to draw a line between two points, point A and point B. That line can be a curve. That line can be linear or straight. Okay. Pen tool allows you to draw two things, paths and shape. What is a path? 
It's a vector line with no thickness. You can add thickness to it later, strokes and all, but it's a vector line with no shapes. Anything you do with the pen tool is vector, not raster. It's not pixel based, it's mathematically built. Okay, and then there is shape. Now what is shape? Well, shape is a path with a fill, where the fill is in the layers panel and the path is in the paths tab. Simple. So what are the shortcuts that you need to remember? P, flashing again and again. This is the most important shortcut for going to the pen tool. Then there is Alt or Option. Used for what? It converts the pen tool if you hover over an anchor point to convert point two. What does the convert point tool do? It introduces a handle, it deletes a handle, it bends the handle. Now then there is Control or Command. That is used to edit the path, okay? Just click on a point, you can edit the handle, you can edit the point, do whatever you want. So that's pretty much it for the pen tool. Hope this video was helpful and if this was, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I would like to thank all these nice people for making this episode possible and helping keep Picks and Perfect free for everybody, forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.